fakes. Now, believe me, ladies and gentlemen, I'm no mathematician, but I know that it's going to take a, uh, from nine to six, three must miss out. So first out for the Group B in the Sudden Death Top 9 will be Bevan Schuller, Schuller Concreting. with Grant Gibson doing the navigational duties. G'day to Gastro looking on the line as well from the flooded uh, Queensland area around the uh, Bris Vegas there. But let's get back to track Bevan Shuler. G'day to the Royal Lancers and uh, Nutsy and there's plenty of people right around the world. G'day to you all. But it is Bevan Shuler and Grant Gibson at the moment. Rotakari Rome just doesn't seem to quite have the power of the top-notch Group Bs. The driving seems to be okay, just cannot squeeze those last few horsepower, all important horsepower, out of this boat, but have done well to feature into this top nine at this point of the day. So Bevan Shuler will be now be on a waiting game, and the man to chase is now posted a time of 54.794, 54.794 four and a pop and a crackle of Shula concreting at the part top part of the track as well. Richard Murray up here from the Mina Machine going to join me in commentary for the latter part of racing today. Mate, uh, what happened to the blown 440? Uh, fuel problems. Fuel problems, all right. Well, uh, listen, mate, come and grab a microphone and uh, let's run through the rest of the day together. So Richard Murray, one of these guys who hates to be behind the microphone, but I don't care. As we see Chris Rasmussen and Holly Sutherland in the professionals out on track at the moment, qualified eighth fastest. So really need to push it very hard indeed. Oh, the big back off and parked it up. That is the end of that for Chris Rasmussen and Holly Sutherland, and that is a dying Pac-Man sound for you. <laughs> so, uh, Richard, I know that you love to have a microphone in your hand, mate. Uh, what do you think that went wrong over there with Chris? Oh, typical top nine, you know, just they've got to, they've got to treat it like a final, really, and... Um and you know they just push it there a little bit more and and that's all it takes is, is clip an island and you'll you know mug it up well there's the uh, replay on the screen just there in front of us and uh, I dare say that may have been uh, may have been a flame out well anyway that's the end of Chris for the day so we'll give you the uh, see you later Jack music if I could just uh, find that one here we go hit the road Jack this is what you get Chris No, we do want him back, but that's the uh, music you get when you're parking up on the trailer for the rest of the day. So, uh, mate, you got a fuel problem with the blown 440. You're not going to make the trip down to Wanaka, so it's all about resetting the boat. Of course, you uh, had a big nose in at Hastings last time out. Uh, you got to worry about fixing the bow that too much or just sort of let it go? No, the bow's been fixed. Um, that's all done. Um, that's probably what took a little bit of time. It, it went to the... Um Mechanic, you know, sort of midweek, but once they sort of found that the fuel pump was buggered, then uh, didn't really have enough time to sort of, you know, get the bits. They got to come from Australia, so they didn't have time to get the bits here in time, and and hence we could have run, but uh, we would have just had the same problem. 
um, just not really worth it. Well, of course, the uh, boat kept cutting out on you, and that's just going to be very disconcerting when you don't know when it's going to cut out. And, uh, well, it cut out at Hastings, and you ended up in the tyre wall. Yeah, that's right. And, um, it, you know, we, we don't want to see that. We don't want to hurt people. And um, it gets quite expensive when you have to fix them all the time. So, yeah. We'll get back to that in a minute there, Richard. But Ollie Berter and Millie Simmons out on track at the moment. The Flounder Pound are qualifying seventh fastest in this top B category. The time that they need to be to be progressing will be a 54.794. Last time out, they went the wrong way. They ended up with a DNF. They'll need to maintain the integrity of their rotation. Oversteered it. That is not the way to get yourself into a top six. Nearly stuck it up on the dirt there, Das. Yeah, like I said, just trying to push it there a little bit more, and uh, that's what happens. So uh, the flounder pounder brother and sister team, Ollie Berter and Millie Simmons, coming through the line now, and a 54.878, not quicker than Bevan Shula. Now, uh, Richard, let's go back to the Hastings round. You stuck the uh, boat into the tyre wall, and you weren't there to collect your crash of the day trophy. Didn't know we were going to get one, to tell you the truth, so um, yeah, we just thought, well, we might as well pack up and go, but uh, you know, it's, it's just one of those things. Well, that's all right, mate. I dare say that you've got to have a penalty shout for me because you didn't collect the trophy. Doesn't that happen every day anyway? Well, it should. Absolutely it should. And look, you're not going to find me fighting against you regarding that. So uh, we are now going to go racing in top nine, Group B, with Buttercup, Daniel Reed. Now, Daniel Reid, uh, qualifying sixth fastest, not the place that we used to see Buttercup, so he's really going to have to make some changes to this boat. I know that they've done a lot of work in it. Uh, I know that Kelvin has done some work on some new blades for him. Just doesn't seem to quite be getting the pace, but that could be for the extra amount. But he, um, he won't give up. Like if he qualifies, gets into the top five, he'll be working on stuff, and, and he'll be at the, at the end. I think. Yeah, look, I think so. Uh, Buttercup does work diligently uh, towards his racing. Certainly comes out of a stock car background, and that sort of background and that hunger to win is certainly intrinsic within the Reed family. So Buttercup in third time, lucky across the line with a 54. Four, he'll go to the top of the table and will progress into the top six. So Buttercup and Jasmine Webster will progress into the top six because Bevan Shawler, Ollie Berter and Chris Rasmussen have either gone slower or got a DNF. So uh, we go from nine to six. Richard Murray just feeling super comfortable up here in commentary. Keeps trying to hand off the microphone. Lucky bloody young Daisy Candy. She's 18 months old or something like that. Isn't sitting up here because he would... Uh, oh, she's two now, is she, mate? Otherwise, you'd be handing it off to her, wouldn't you, mate? She can talk better than I can, I can tell you that now. <laughs> and I would not disagree with that at all. <laughs> so it will be Craig Shaw coming up now with Grant Humphreys, the mullet man doing the navigational duties. This guy has had a mullet since the day of his birth. The only time he lost the mullet was as the great say to raise money for uh, supporting cancer uh, research and things like that. So the mullet man has grown his hair back and gone straight back mullet style. But Craig Shaw after a few years of just having this out of limits machine handling and behaving terribly he's finally got it sorted so great to see that Craig Shaw is doing well. Normally Stu White would be in the silly seat here but Stu White uh, may have stayed out a little bit too late last night and Craig Shaw just grabbing the tyres at the bottom. The split is a 32.9 so he's gone quickest at the split thus far. No, sorry, Buttercup was 0.2 quicker at the split. So Craig Shaw in outer limits, now pushing very hard through to this tricky part of the track on the other side. Around the bottom, hugs it tight, and a 54.270. Craig Shaw to the top of the table, 0.15 quicker than Daniel Reed. That was quite a good run there, KB, and you can probably improve on that a little bit too, I think. 
Yeah, look, it's uh, it's interesting. When you go from the final left-hander up the top part of the track to the crowd side and come through this washing machine over towards the V8 Jet Sprints sign over there, is it difficult to find your way through that channel? Uh, it depends on the time of the day, but but you're sort of concentrating on, on hitting that wake right and, and not letting it throw you... You know, out of out of your line. Um, but if you get it right, it's it's not that bad. Um, but if you know, as the sun goes down, they'll find it a little bit harder because you sort of struggle to see as you're sort of heading towards the outside of the track. So they're starting to feel their way around now with Tim and Debbie Edhouse. Liquid addiction out on the course at the moment. These goals, that was an oversteer, but uh, Tim Edhouse had to be quick to recover from that. Really knocky in there, as you said, Richard. Finals time, putting the pressure on. So the split at a 32. That's the quickest split so far in this Group B category. So he's recovered from those little mistakes. Has Tim Edhouse, Debbie Edhouse, his wife, sitting alongside. No in helmet communication required there. Debbie will be making sure that Tim knows exactly where he needs to be going. The final run to the line, Tim Edhouse at a 53.047 straight to the top of the table, point two quicker than Craig Shaw. Hey, we've got the information here for the super boats going into the top nine from slowest to fastest. It will be Bevan Muir, Paddy Hayden, Baden Gray, Leighton Manel, Scott Donald, Aaron Hanson, Nick Berryman, Glenn Head and Rob Coley, uh, who was 0.7 of a second, no, 0.07 of a second quicker than Glenn Head. In fact, because Leighton Manel is a day licence, Dave Simmons will progress, but Dave Simmons is out. So uh, that nine, as we read out, will stay exactly as it is. Dave had a bit of a hemorrhage, did he? Yeah, they've uh, thrown a rod, I do believe. It's two rods today? Yeah. It's not good? No, they are not going to be happy about that at all. Just as well I'm not here then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It probably would have been three. Well, yeah, that's right. So we now go to see Sam Gray and Mike Allen. These guys have done a brilliant job all day, right from the outset, just showing the aggression that he's needed to end up at the top of the tree. So Sam Gray, the ranger from the Naki. Wow, that is super wide. Coming down towards commentary, there are some brave lines that these blokes are taking. Oh, threw it into that right hand, it would have lost a bit of time there. Now into the speed part of the track, carry as much momentum through there as you can. Settle it down into this right hander, the big sweeping right hander. Open up the apex for Sam Gray through the washing machine. Oh, he's kept on it, the boat settled and stayed. So Sam. Three point two four nine into P two. Tim Edhouse quickest at the moment. Not bad for a rookie, is he? Mate, they're not bad at all. Their fourth uh, race meeting, and wow, haven't they come along in leaps and bounds to be in the top nine? They will progress into the top six. The local man, Hayden Wilson, coming in now. So Hayden Wilson was 1.1 second behind the time that Carl Beaver has posted to get into this top nine. So Hayden Wilson got to make a few more runs on the board. He's currently leading the overall championship in the Group B category. Needs to get on top of this here today. Carl Beaver being a second in front coming into this part of the day. That is a long, long way in front. Hayden always just looks so smooth, you know, and I guess that's why he's so fast. Everything's just, just, you know, got the right lines. Doesn't look like he's going fast at all, but always does a good time. And even in and out of that hairpin, just does it, makes it look effortless. A little bit of a back off down there, just getting that boat settled. He knows that that corner can be a bit tricky. Wow, what was going on there? Was that the jet unit coming down a bit? I'm not sure. Something's not quite right, I'd say. There's... there's 
there was a little bit of uh, hesitation going down that straight and uh, he sort of backed off and there was quite a big w wiggle going down there, something not right. Yeah, that boat not handling it well, just wondering if that reverse bucket's causing him a few problems. Oh, the boat all over the place. No, I'd Lucky say I'd say his track. grill, I'd say his grill's coming out because his reverse bucket's right out. So it's a 56.942, so Hayden Wilson just trying to work out where he is. He will not progress into the top six. Commentator's curse, hey, okay, Gabby? Oh, mate, you talked him up, Richard. You talked him up and the grill fell out. Mate, don't let him know that you were doing the talking it up, Cup. Don't you tell him either. Oh, no, I will. Because I can say it wasn't me this time. That is an unfortunate way for the man leading the Group B Championship to end his day in front of the home crowd. Beaver, the Beaver Reliever, and Jay Amon out on track at the moment. The people who posted the fastest time coming into this top nine. Carl Beaver, remember, for the last round at Hastings had an absolute nightmare. He's had a couple of moments here today. He did get a DNF. I'm oh, sorry, he did go the wrong way, sorted it out. The early qualifying run. You can't afford to do that now. This is top nine. You get it wrong and you are out. Currently sitting on the bubble is Ollie Birder and Millie Simmons. Cal Beaver at the split of 31. So he's the quickest of the Group B so far in this top nine, being the final boat. So this is a good run here for the Beaver Reliever. So Cal Beaver now in the run for the line. And that is a great time with a 52-5-4-4 straight to the top of the table. Half a second quicker than Tim Edhouse. So that means that Ollie Birder is out. The local Hayden Wilson is out. Chris Rasmussen is out. So it will go slowest to fastest going into the top six for the Group B. Bevan Shuler, Daniel Reed, Craig Shaw, Sam Gray, Tim Edhouse and that man, Carl Beaver. We'll reset the clocks. We're going to go top nine, Group A. I'll just say breath if you don't mind.